Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm taking up more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. One of the things that you'll notice at times over the seasons is pieces of wardrobe. Um, of course, we, uh, the cast, had their regular dresses throughout a season and sometimes for multiple seasons. But sometimes, like when we were younger and we outgrew things, uh, you might later see them, if not if they weren't passed down to one of the other children, you might suddenly see them worn by somebody else at the school. Uh, or um, if it was a, a dress that none of us had worn yet, you might in a later season suddenly see us wear something that you saw somebody else wear. I caught this recently looking back at the episode, The Marathon, and I suddenly saw that Deirdre Lenahan, who played Daisy, was wearing this coat. Now this was a coat that we also saw Marsha Woolery wear in the episode, The Emergence. And then later on, we saw Aaron wear in the episode, The Children's Carol. So a case of that, and I'm sure you've noticed other other things. And I would catch him sometimes, I'd see some dress and go, oh, wait a minute, I wore that <laughs> later on. Or that was a dress I used to have or something like that. So things just, they went back into the wardrobe stock. And then uh, it wouldn't be like back-to-back -back episodes, but uh, we certainly saw um, a recycling of, of outfits. This one is from Danny. You may have discussed this in one of your other sh videos, but did you have to go back and do a lot of voiceovers because of the intrusive external noise? It just seems like it would be impossible to get all the dialogues, all the dialogue properly recorded while a scene was being filmed. It was particularly difficult on the back lot because we were on the flight path of the Burbank Airport. So we frequently had to cut and do it again or do pickups. So we might do part of a, part of a shot uh, to get a piece of dialogue that was clean. We did almost no um, going back in and redoing audio because it was just too expensive. So we would do additional takes they would do their best to clean things up in post-production. Um, our sound people were really good. Um, and then there's probably still times when you hear a little something. You know, obviously, if there was music over something, that would help. But mostly, we just had to wait out airplanes and helicopters and traffic and dirt bikes and lawnmowers and <laughs> garbage trucks. And, you know, and it ate up time also. So, you know, you were you were fighting with it. When we were in the sound stage, a little easier, um, but they would like shut off anything that made noise inside the sound stage, and uh, we did the best we could. This is a question from Mike. I always wondered of the four upstairs bedrooms, whose did not face the front yard? We know John Boy's is on the far left as you face the house, but the other two seem to change every once in a while. Um, I wasn't able to find examples of them changing, although I'm not not to say that they didn't. Um, but what I do remember is the center one being the girls, because that was in the episode, the burnout, the one where we threw our clothes out the window when the fire started. So that to me would say that the parents was the one to the right, if ours was the middle and John Boy's was the left, because I think those three had to be the ones on the front because you saw points where Olivia looked out that window. You didn't see her from the exterior where you, like where you would see John Boy in his window or where you saw, I think you might have seen, you know, one of the girls in there or something, or you saw us throw those clothes out. Uh, but in, um, in the Easter story, when Olivia gets up at the end and walks, uh, she looks out the window then at the flowers in the front yard. So clearly she was on the front of the house or she would not be able to look out the window and see those flowers. Also in the venture, when she wakes up during the storm and looks out to see if she can tell if John's still out working, she looks out the window towards the mill. So those would clearly indicate that the parents' room was also there, which means that the boys would have to be on the side or the back side. Uh, I don't think there was an upper story window that we saw um, in the house there. Uh, in the burnout, again, we saw the boys throwing clothes out a window. Uh, so I'm assuming that was supposed to be the backside of the house. And then in 
Also in the marathon, you see Mary Ellen up on the roof and she is supposedly dropping a wire down into the boys' room. Well, in that case, she's dropping a wire down as if it is above the living room. And yet I don't ever remember seeing a window um, on that side of the house, but I guess I'll have to look again and see. Maybe it's something else I missed. So that's what I know about windows. <laughs> this is a question from Steven. Hi, Judy. Do you know why there were two steps up from the kitchen and then on the right, the steps up to the second floor from there or the left two steps down from the grandparents' bedroom? So basically that whole landing thing um, outside the grandparents' room, yeah, it was a little unusual because then you had two steps into the kitchen and then you went down into the parents' room. So why was there that landing? I don't know. Um, was it a set that already existed that was like that? Did they want to break up the uh, rooms for shooting purposes? Uh, the landing was nice. We used it at times. So maybe it was based off of some house idea that the construction people had, the art designer. Maybe it was based off of something Earl wanted. I don't really know why it came out that way or whether they were existing pieces from some other sets that were in stock. Your guess is as good as mine, but I really loved the way that was all put together and I can't imagine it any other way. Question from Just Some Guy. I'm curious about how long it would take to create the set for the general store or the Baldwin sisters' home. Could they assemble a set in a few hours? Did they have photos or instructions to follow? Basically, those sets were never taken down. The interior of Igodzi's store was always there. The interior of the Baldwins in terms of like their front entryway and their main parlor where the piano was um, and where the fireplace was with the judge's picture over, those were permanent sets that were on stage 26 all the time. Um, other sets might come and go. So in that case, I'm sure they had photos. I'm sure they had blueprints and they may very well have had, you know, like uh, inventory numbers or it's like these are the flat numbers or things like that. If they had to once more create uh, I can Corbett's bedroom or the inside of the shed or a bedroom in the Baldwin's house. So those types of sets that we didn't see all the time, um, those, you know, I'm sure they had some methodology for putting those back together. And probably, I don't, potentially a few hours with sets like that. But, you know, the set dressing for Ike's store would have taken a bit of time. Come on, there was a lot of stuff in there. Um, and probably once we had the interior of the shed when Ben and Cindy were living there, that probably... I'm thinking that may have stayed as a sort of permanent set that was added to the interior of Stage 26 once that was being used all the time. A question here from Eric, who said, uh, what game shows were you cast on or the, were the cast on? The only ones I've seen uh, was Family Feud. So, of course, yes, the Waltons competed against Dukes of Hazard on Family Feud, and we totally got our butts kicked. <laughs> so I don't like to talk about that one. Uh, we... Some members of the cast also competed on a some sort of a sports competition one time. I think it was me and Eric and um, I think uh, Tony Becker and David Harper. Um, and I think Martha Nix might have competed. So there was about five or, five or six of us that competed in a sports competition one time as a team. Again, we didn't do terribly well. Um, and then there was more individual things. Of course, I did Battle of the Network Stars three times. I did a couple Circus of the Stars. I think Mary, I don't know that she, she might have done Circus of the Stars. She also did another sports competition thing of some sort. Um, and then I did, you know, I did other game shows. I did Password Plus. I did Celebrity Charades. I did Crosswits Chain Reaction. Uh, there was even a Canadian show that I went up to shoot in Toronto one time. Uh, it was all about puns and I'm horrible at puns. And so I'd never been, usually if I was going to do something like that, I would watch the show and learn the rhythm of the show, how it was, how it played and, and, and prepare myself. But because I couldn't see the show in advance, I went up and I was like totally in the deep end and sunk, <laughs> but I wasn't invited back, obviously. Uh, but I always had a good time doing all those sorts of uh, sports competitions and game shows. They were fun for me. Had a 
cute comment here from Yentl24 that I just came across recently and wanted to share. It's so strange that you changed your name from Mary Ellen and pretend that your life growing up with your Walton family was from some form of TV show. Despite this delusion, I gave credit to John and Olivia that you seem so kind and otherwise grounded. I would like to ask you what your morning was like before coming to the set. How early you get up? Did you eat breakfast at home or in set? What was your commute like? Oh God, I started believing your delusion that it was all just a TV show. <laughs> So creative. Um, my morning, well, it, it really depended on what time I had to be at work. Um, my my work time, call time might be anything from 6.15, you know, to one in the afternoon. Um, so like after, or two o'clock, you know, after lunch or something like that. But typically I'd say it was in the um, seven to nine o'clock range. That was pretty typical. I'm not a breakfast person, so at that point in time, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say I ate breakfast before I went to work. Uh, you know, I'd get to work and, you know, that would be kind of it. Um, my commute varied because I moved uh, three, four times during the course of the series. So initially it was probably half an hour. Then it went to probably 45 minutes or so. Then it was like in time of day, we're LA, so the commute could be anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour sometimes, even if you're only, I think at one point I lived, the furthest I lived was I think about, you know, maybe 20 miles. And for the longest time, I probably was at about 18 miles, So, but it could take an hour, it's LA. So, you know, get up, roll out of bed. The good thing was um, my hair and makeup was gonna be done when I got to work, so I didn't have to go spend a bunch of time putting myself together and looking presentable before I got to work. So throwing on some comfortable clothes and when I once I was driving age, sitting in traffic until I got to work. <laughs> Thank you for your creativity. That's what I have for you for this segment of Ask Judy. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. If you have a question, please put it in the comments below. That's where I pulled questions from. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.